So much of a successful photography trip is based on planning, and those plans start long before I ever step foot in Zion. First, the overall trip has to be put together, and that's the easy part. First week in November, and book a room at the Desert Pearl Inn. Sleeping in a tent under the stars is nice, but relaxing in a hot tub after a long day hiking is even nicer, as are the hot showers. Once travel arrangements are made, I start to form mental images of shots I want to capture on the trip. Inspiration for these shots comes from various sources. I've made a habit over the years to take cell phone images of different compositions as I hike the narrows. My cell phone records the time the image is taken, so next year I'll know exactly where to be for the best reflected light. Other times, and this happens more than I care to admit, an idea for a shot will come from an image that I've messed up on in the past. That was the case with my first shot of the day. I had planned a variation on an image I had taken the previous year on Velvia 50. While that image was technically successful, it's never one that I cared too much for. I always felt that the composition was too disjointed. This year I planned a far simpler composition, aiming my camera straight down river, placing emphasis on the white water leading to the wall bathed in beautiful reflected light. As usual, I arrived well ahead of the light to set up my camera. This is secretly one of my favorite parts of large format, setting up before the light is good. I love watching the looks of bewilderment as hikers pass me by and see my camera aimed at a dead scene. It's the little things in life that make me happy. This shot went off basically without any trouble. There was a little more wind than I had anticipated, so I did have to stand in the freezing water for a while waiting for the perfect 90 second window of opportunity. I stood beside my camera for as long as my feet would hold out. Then I would retreat out of the river until I could feel them again. It did get a bit painful at times, but overall it was one of the smoothest shooting experiences I've ever had. I even had a chance to help out an 8x10 photographer with some, well let's just call it compositional refinement. It's a shame, but I don't think his shot turned out quite like he was hoping. Oh well, there's always next year. I packed up for my second planned shot of the day, which was only about 100 yards away from the first. It's a scene I had recorded on my cell phone the previous year, and I was really excited to shoot this one. Of course, just because you meticulously plan a shot does not guarantee that it will be successful. Sometimes there might be wind that starts up during your nearly 4 minute exposure. Sometimes, instead of a 4 minute exposure, what you really need is about a 4 second exposure. And sometimes you might accidentally catch a dark slide as you're removing a film holder from your pack. Any one of these unplanned scenarios can ruin an image, and if all three happen on the same image, well, I can just about guarantee that your shot won't turn out. Not that I speak from experience or anything like that. Oh well, perhaps this is just one of those scenes that will have to be witnessed instead of captured. Unless Fuji comes out with Velvia 3200, and I'm not really holding my breath on that one. And here's a free photography tip. If you want an amazing image, bring a digital camera to the Narrows alcove at about 10 a.m. Aim your camera upriver and use whatever combination of bracketing or high ISO shots you need to obtain about a 4 second exposure. Click the shutter and enjoy the award winning image you just created. You can thank me later. After a quick snack, I packed up my gear from what turned out to be a disaster of an image. With no real planned shots remaining, I intended to use the rest of the day to scout images for my 2016 trip. I've got to admit that I really enjoy the stress-free element that is involved in scouting. No real plans to shoot means I can hike at my leisure without having to worry about things like whether or not the wind will pick up, will clouds arrive and kill my reflected light, or will a continuous stream of hikers make photography impossible. With those artificial stress points removed, I'm able to enjoy the sights and sounds of the narrows at a much more laid back pace. Of course, if you're lucky, you might just come across the rarest occurrence of all, an unplanned composition that is so breathtaking you simply must unpack your gear and quickly set up a shot before the light fades. You'll doubt your composition because you were rushed. You'll doubt it will even turn out because by the time you took your second exposure, the reflected light had already faded. But if you're really lucky, maybe, just maybe, everything will turn out right and you'll capture your all-time favorite large format image. All on something you never even planned to take in the first place. Man, I love Zion. <laughs>